tribunal, election tribunal, reaffirmed my election as the duly elected senator for the Federal Capital Territory. And um, I feel a great sense of relief that I could now start facing the work that the people of the FCT elected me to do. First, I would like to thank the very best legal team, the best lawyers anybody could have. I'm really blessed to have had them. Secondly, I was also blessed to have some of the most, um, the fairest judges that could be found anywhere. Our judges were very serious. They showed a lot of fairness and integrity in their job. And I consider myself blessed to have been given such judges. Thirdly, I would like to thank the Labour Party, the obedience, the people of the FCT, all the people who have worked for this mandate and to celebrate with them at the affirmation of the mandate. I would also like to reach out to Senator Aduda. There's no victor and there's no vanquished. He ran a good race and now that it's over, I would reach out to him to come and work with me, to do for the FCT together the things he would have done had he won. The goal is to make FCT great, and I know that's what he would wish. Just as I have worked with him in the past, I am sure that we can work together. I would also like to reach out to Honorable Zachary Angulu, and every other person that ran against me, other stakeholders in the FCT, Honorable Gisalo, and all the other people that have always strived for the best in this place, that we should all join hands and work together and make FCT a great place. FCT, for whatever reasons, has regressed in the last several years, 20 years, let's put it this way, so it's not anybody's specific fault. But it's the capital, it's the seat of government, the face of Nigeria, and we should make it one that we will all be very proud of. And um, I just consider myself blessed and honored the way things have gone. Thank you. Oh, yes, you can. Um, I will start with the second one. Until the Supreme Court decides that FCT is a state, I think I will leave that subject till then. When they do decide that we're a state, then we will start asking for the things that every other state has. Three senators, several House of Rep members, and all the other perks of a state. But until then, the only perk we had was that the president is supposed to be the governor of FCT and the Senate, the equivalent of the state assembly. That's in the constitution. So let's see what the constitutional reform would bring and what the Supreme Court decides. So we will leave that for now so because it is sub judice. But going to the um, the subject of demolitions, because I have been engrossed in my case and many things, and the minister is very new, we have not met. We spoke for the first time today when he called to congratulate me, and we assured each other that we will work, we work together. Now, you must remember the minister and I have different goals. I was elected by the people, therefore answerable to you, the people of the FCT. He's not. But working together, I'm hoping that we can merge our interests. Um, for one thing, I'm not telling you that there won't be demolitions. 
there are many problems with FCT. Uh, you look at the flooding that's taking place everywhere. Why? Houses are being built on flood channels. Permission is being given for people to build estates in on in flood plains. So many things that we need to fix. In the process of fixing them, I'm not talking of random demolitions that I think that the minister has not been here long enough to have studied everything holistically. And I really feel that he needs to take time to look at the whole picture of the FCT, then decide where, what places and things. Lots of things need demolishing. There's no doubt about it. I can tell you several right now. When I went to trade more, you can even see houses being built. Not that they've already that they are they are built up houses. So they are in the process of being built in the flood channel. You know that for the good of the whole estate, those houses must go down. But. I, I truthfully, I can't tell you about the ones that have de been demolished so far. I have not been paying attention. I feel that I have the full right to now speak as the senator representing the FCT now that I have been reaffirmed. Before, the, we were in court. And every day as the case got closer, I was pretty occupied with it. So we will address them, but what I can assure you is that the interests of the people will be paramount in everything that I do. Does that answer your question, sir? Let me take the National Assembly. I'm not aware that they have been. That's number one. Number two, one of the reasons why in I think between, I can't talk about previous times, but I would like to say between 2015 and 2019 and why FCT has not thrived, you cannot bring mandate secretaries from outside FCT and expect them to excel. Mandate secretaries, if they are zoned, they should be found in the FCT. You can find every zone in FCT, people who have lived here for several years who are politicians or bureaucrats in the FCT. That is necessary. I remember I was speaking to the Mandate Secretary of Agriculture, or one of them, 2016 or 2017. He didn't even know where Kwali was. It's like taking me now to Bayelsa and deciding that because somebody asked that I be given a slot, and then you want to make me a, a, a commissioner of anything in Bielsa, I wouldn't know where to start. By the time I get acquainted with the place, my tenure is finished. So um, people live in the FCT, and just like everything, you need to know the terrain, you need to know the problems, you need to know to be able to solve them. But the minister is new to the FCT, and maybe he wasn't guided right. But we need to look at that again. That means there is a vacuum. How? There's a lacuna. You've been there for some time now. One expects that. The Senate is on recess, so they're not approving anything. You cannot get approval from a house that's not sitting. And also, you also have to remember that the minister of the FCT now, and I don't think we've ever really had a governor, we'll have, we have had one as a senator, as a, a minister of the FCT. So some governors may think that FCT as minister, since um, between the, the minister administers FCT. The senator is the highest elected office in the FCT. The, the FCT, the minister of FCT does not have executive powers. He works hand in hand with the National Assembly. 
and the president to, ask, to administer FCT. So I've never met the minister. So if there's a lacuna, it isn't completely my fault. The Senate is on recess. And remember, the minister has been there two, three weeks. The Senate has been inaugurated, what, two months? And most of the two months, we've been in court. Yes. Yeah. Second, um, one of the biggest issues you raise right now is not even demolitions, it's currency. Yes, of course. You uh, didn't worry about life can this day. We, we, we're attacking cars in traffic. The truth of the matter is I feel that just as um, you expect your leaders you, you, to, to, to be kind to you, you also have to be kind to your leaders. Let me give you a scenario of what the last year and a half has been for most of the people in the National Assembly. In fact, now when you look at our platforms, is when most of the senators are being affirmed. Most of the time you come, somebody's off somewhere, he has tribunal in somewhere or the other, he has to raise money for lawyers, all sorts of things. So the last two, eight weeks that we have been senators, I will assure you that 90% of the senators have been completely distracted which is only to be expected. If you're not a senator, you cannot represent the people. So that's the first thing, hurdle you must clear. Number two, I assure you that most of the senators, especially the new ones, they are definitely not silent. The only difference is that when we have issues to discuss, and I suppose it's properly managed by the Senate president, when the House is going to be rowdy, he calls for an executive session, and you will never know what happened in there. I know some of the things I have seen in those executive sessions, even with the older senators. Sometimes I'm shocked at how rowdy the House gets. We all are extremely vocal, I promise you. If not, there are certain things that would have happened that have not. So you need to give us a few months to see what kind of senators we're going to be. You cannot judge us of three months, nine of which we've been on recess already now, I'd say at least six weeks. We were not even there for the six weeks. Most of the senators are away. The only reason that I am here, I went away, I came back, is because I wanted to be around for my judgment even if I wasn't going to be physically in the court. And then I'm going away again because this is the biggest period we have for being away. I'm one of those people that I have gone to the Senate every day it has sat. So you, you need to, it's unfair. There are eight Labour Party senators, and I assure you, not if, they're not quiet. Even the 50 minority senators are not quiet senators at all. And even within the APC, I will tell you that at least 20% of them are definitely not quiet senators. So you have to wait to see the things that unfold, to see what we didn't even have committees. So it's not as if you can talk about any specific issues other than what was brought to the Senate for you to deal with on that day. But now that we have committees, then you will start to see the kind of senators that we're all going to be. Then you can judge us. And as for FCT, believe me, I have a long list of problems that the minister and I and the National Assembly have to solve. I have also reminded the Senate that the Senate is the equivalent of the State Assembly of FCT. We need a lot of bylaws passed. Before we went on recess, I had brought a motion for urgent discussion, but the day it was to be um, heard was when we started to screen ministers, and it was, it was urgent because it had a, a, a time constraint. Security, 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 and I made all the senators know 
that it was a very critical and urgent problem. And I have several. My shopping list for FCT is quite long. I know the problems of the FCT. So as the minister has said he will work closely with me, we will solve those problems. You have to give us time. He's been minister, I don't know, all of two weeks, maybe, or three. And he's, I have certainly have not been around. We are on recess. The chairman of FCT committee, most of National Assembly, nobody's there. I don't think he's met anybody. Pardon? The judgment of the court. The judgment of the court. Well, obviously, as an obedient, I am and just even a Nigerian, I'm not, I can see a lot of lapses in the decision of the courts. And I also, a lot of the tribunals, but as you all know, and that's why I said I counted myself lucky, and there are many things I cannot tell you about, but I know that my judges had a lot of integrity, they were the real judges. But in lots of places, I've also seen where uh, Femi Falano quoted the Electoral Act. If you're not a member of a party, you cannot complain about the primaries of a party. And you have 14 days from the date of the primaries to do so. But some judges are using that to undo elections. Let's see what the Court of Appeal says about things like that. There are many things that are wrong. I also see certain places where somebody is in court, then he goes and takes another job as a minister. I've also seen the Supreme Court, excuse me, ruling that once you have taken another job, then the senatorial bid has lapsed. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that we have to wait till all these cases are concluded. Then you can then we can then talk about them. But for now, 